Alrighty, let's get started. First thing we need is our earring forms. And I am going to be using these teardrop ones. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit. I think they're very elegant and you can get these in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, we're doing the teardrops today. And then I took a piece of sturdy cardboard. This is actually <laughs> from a, a paint sample and you make yourself a template. I actually used a piece of regular paper to trace it out because this is a lot easier to trace and isn't going to be so bulky and then use that to make a more durable um, form so that I can trace this over and over again if I want to make multiple earrings. So we're going to need that. You're also going to need your sealant and I am using this Nun Design sealant. And then we're going to top it all off with the Lisa Pavlik, Pav no. what is that? Lisa Pavelka Magic Gloss. So, first things first, pick your background. I found that the smaller cardstock packs have smaller designs, which is better because when you look at this, it's a very small area, and in the big pages, the design was too large and you couldn't appreciate it. So, I'm going to go through and pick a design I like. Okay, so I have chosen this paper. Now what you want to do is hold your template and let's say it's something with more of a design that you're looking at. For example, something with these flowers. You can use your template then to give you an idea of what your earring is going to look like based on your template. Also something to be aware of is if you want, if you have a pattern with direction, do you want both earrings to be facing the same way? Do you want to do it up and down, zigzag? So you can play around with it and it's very helpful to have a template like this so that you can play with it. Um, also directionality, are you going to have a left and a right or is it symmetrical and doesn't matter? So just some things to keep in mind. So I am going to use this paper and these dots are very close together, so there's really no rhyme or reason. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trace two. And then cut these out. All right, so there's our two. Now I'm going to try them on my forms to make sure that they fit and to make any adjustments I may need. Okay, so now that we have our background ready, take those off. And then I'm going to take my sealant and just put that with a brush. sticks really well <laughs> and very quickly with the sealant so try and make sure you get it in perfectly I don't know if you can see I got it a little off place and so there's a little bit extra hanging over there so just be careful
And there's my next one. Now we're going to do one more, one to two coats over top. This will darken your background color a little bit as it saturates, but not too much. But you want to make sure it's really well covered so that when we add our gloss, our magic gloss on top, we don't have extra bubbles coming up underneath our gloss. Now you could put anything here. It doesn't have to be uh, paper, cardstock. It could be glitter. It could be small dried flowers. As long as you seal it well, you uh, should be fine to cover it with the magic gloss. So let me give that a moment to dry. I'll put a second coat and then I'll bring you back for the next step. Now comes the fun part. We're going to add our Lisa Pavelko Magic Gloss. Now this says it cures in UV light or in direct sunlight. And I've used it both ways. I've used it with a UV nail lamp, which I'm going to do right now. I've also put it out in the sun and cured it with that. I have also used my kid's black light that is in their bedroom. And that worked too. So there are several different things you can use. You don't have to have a special light to do this. You can just do it on a sunny day. So I'm going to fill each one of the earring forms up with the Lisa Pavelka Magic Gloss and then hit it with a lighter to pop the box. As you can see it's quite thick. You just want to kind of put it on there and it'll kind of self-level. And I'm going to take my toothpick and help move it around to all of the edges. Now as you can see, or maybe you can because of the reflection, there is a big bubble there, so I'm going to take my lighter and just run it across and that pulls up any of the bubbles. Now this will not cure until it gets indirect sunlight or UV light, so I'm going to wait just a minute, let the, any more bubbles that may be underneath there come up, hit it with the lighter again, and then put it in the lamp. And I'm just holding that about a half an inch away, just not burning. Let's put it in the lamp. Now we're going to wait about five minutes and then we'll check it. Okay, our time is up. camera but they have a nice little dome shape to them. Now let's say like these two I got more on this one than I did on this one. You can just add another layer. Add a little bit more and cure it again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that my two match. Now you want to make sure that your sealant is completely dry before you put on the uh, UV coat and I'll show you why. This one was not dry all the way and look I can slide my beautiful top coat all the way off because my glue was not dry yet. So make sure that your sealant is completely dry before you attempt to add your UV. Now you can learn from my mistakes. There we go. 